uh, commend uh, this debate so thus far. Um, I call Tim Vandermolen. Thank you, Mr Chair. Look, it's been an interesting period going through these annual reviews and, and as a first-time MP to sit on these for the first opportunity was really interesting to see the work that was being done in the different entities. And I'd just like to start with Crown Irrigation. There's been a lot happening in this space and a lot of project work in the pipeline. In New Zealand, we are particularly fortunate to be very wealthy in terms of our freshwater resource. Now, we utilise only about 3% of that resource on an annual basis, and so there is massive opportunity for us to continue to capture some of that potential opportunity around enhancing the economic, the social, the environmental benefits for our rural communities through irrigation projects. And that was something that was highlighted to us through the annual review, the value in, in particular around some of the economic gains and the environmental aspects that can be enhanced. Now, in, environmentally, there was significant opportunity to improve the water quality, to maintain minimum flows, and some of those aspects were considered to be major draw cards for continuing with the irrigation projects that were on the cards. Of course, we've heard the new government is not continuing with these projects and are indeed looking to pull out of some of the projects that had already moved into various stages of discussion. And of course, there is an argument that says, hey, there was no legal obligation entered into, and, and that may well be the case. But we also need to consider what is the moral obligation upon us in this House to make and adhere to commitments that have been signalled well within the communities, and especially where there has been significant investment already committed in good faith by members of those communities. And that was something that was certainly raised with some concern from the Crown Irrigation perspective. And of course then there was uncertainty also around the potential to fund some of these projects through the Regional Development Fund, and they classified some of the smaller projects that were currently on their work programme to be considered localised projects, uh, which had been indicated as potentially being up for funding. So really what I'm getting to here, Mr Chair, is that there was a lot of uncertainty around these projects that were in the pipeline and whether or not they will indeed be continuing uh, when we've been told it is unlikely that they will be so. Moving on to MPI, we had a range of different topics covered in that area and again some really interesting initiatives. There's been a lot of work happening in that space and, and primary industries is, is a passion of mine, Mr Chair, so it was really fascinating to hear some of the great work that has been done over a number of years now. And some of those areas, biosecurity is one where it continues to be a constant challenge for New Zealand. We are lucky to be an island nation where we have no other land borders. That presents some challenges and requires continued ongoing focus on biosecurity. There will always be risks to that, and we've seen those over time with the Queensland fruit fly, the brown marmorated stink bug, uh, more recently Mycoplasma bovis, and the myrtle rust as well. So those challenges are something we need to fight back against and be prepared to manage when they arise. And what was raised with us was there was a little bit of concern around the timing, the assets that are being put towards some of those now, and most recently, of course, the most topical issue being Mycoplasma bovis. And that has been a challenging situation to deal with, and, and I just want to acknowledge that for anyone involved in that, that must be a particularly difficult situation for them. But really, we need a, a quick response. We need to have the best information we can at hand in managing that appropriately. And of course, likewise, with the stink bug incursions, and we've had some of these in the past that have been dealt with and managed efficiently, and this time we had another incursion. There was concern that some of these stink bugs had travelled significant distances within our borders. And so the, this was really highlighting some of the challenges and the need to continue focus with the new government on biosecurity, and I'd encourage them to do just that. And of course then we had a reasonable discussion around dairy, the dairy industry and where that's going and obviously now we're looking at a, a review of the DERA Act as well which is pretty significant for this industry and looks to incorporate aspects much wider than just dairy, for example some of the environmental considerations 
Are we going to see a stocking rate cap coming in? Are we going to see limits put in place? Is Fonterra going to be re required to continue to pick up all milk from suppliers? And that's one where we see an ongoing focus around the environmental space. So that would be an area I'd encourage uh, prompt action on. And of course, then we heard a bit about forestry and honey as well, and the flip-flopping on some of those decisions more recently. So a lot of work happening in this space, Mr Chair. Um, I call the Honourable Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Look, it's, it's my pleasure to take a call on this. And let, let me... Uh...